For the following exercises, given the function f, evaluate f of negative three, f of negative two, f of negative one, and f of zero. All right, so just keep in mind the general idea down here that whenever they ask you to evaluate f of a number, all right, just like they're doing here, they're asking us to evaluate f of negative three and negative two, et cetera, it basically just means to plug in the number for x into the equation that you're given, right here are all the equations, all right, into the equation that's given, and just simplify, all right, that's all it is. So let's take a look at the first one. So here is a piecewise function. All that means is that there are two different equations that govern this overall function at different values of x, okay? So if I want to evaluate the um, f of negative three here, what that means is my x value is really negative three. And I have to then consider which of these two equations should I plug in the value of negative three into for x. You have to be aware of where negative three falls. Negative three is less than negative two, right? And therefore, you have to use the first equation to find the function value of negative three, okay? Because x lies on this continuum, right, where it's less than negative two. So what I'm going to do is use the first equation, okay? So it says x plus one, right? But instead of writing x here, I'm going to substitute that on out for negative three, and then add one. So what's the answer here? So the answer is simply, right, negative two. That is the value, that is the f of negative three. This is the answer. All we have to do is after we plug in the x value, just simplify, right? Fairly straightforward, now we can run through this, okay? We just gotta be careful about which equation to plug into. The next one said f of negative two. So negative two, if you notice here, we would use now the second equation because this says you're going to, this is telling me use this equation when x is either greater than or equal to negative two. So we do have that scenario for the second part here. So basically now take this equation of negative two x minus three and plug in negative two for your x value. And then all you have to do is just simplify this. So this becomes positive four minus three is obviously a positive one. That's over. And then do the same thing for negative one. Notice negative one is greater than negative two, so we're gonna use the second equation again. So it's negative two times negative one minus three. Right, this is now positive two minus three, so this becomes a negative one. And then last but not least here, f of zero. This is going to be same, same thing we're using the last equation. Negative two times uh, zero minus three, and now is a negative three. So those would be all of the values, all right? Let's do the next one, okay? So the next one is just as easy, except it's actually even easier, but it might be a little confusing at the start. So we're gonna take our f of negative three value, okay? Now, consider which of these two equations, you might be saying, well, this is an equation, these are exact numbers. Yes, that's true. However, just consider that these are the two functional values that we'll be talking about. Where does negative three lie? Which domain does negative three lie in? Well, it's going to lie in this one, right? Because this is telling us to, you're gonna plug in x for, well, there's no x here, so that's the trick, right? But you're going to be using this value for the function when x is less than, excuse me, less than or equal to negative three. So I would take my x value here and plug it in for whatever x value was here, but there isn't any, right? So this is even easier than you think. It's just one, it's just whatever this number is there. That's all, there's nothing to do, simple, right? So f now of negative two, which, which value will I be using this time? Well, negative two is greater than negative three. So I'm gonna be using now the second value, okay? So that's just zero. How about then f of negative one? Again, same thing, it's greater than negative three, so that's just zero. And I think you can see the pattern here, right? This is just zero. Great, easy. Now let's do the last one, okay? Same concept, let's see if we can run through it. So this is f of negative three. Consider where negative three lies, which domain? Negative three is gonna be less than or equal to, right, negative one. It's gonna be less than negative one. So I'm gonna be using this first function, great. So let's write it out. So it's negative two times now negative three, because that's the x value squared plus three. All you have to do now is simplify. 
So this becomes a positive 9, right? Positive 9 then times a negative 2 is going to be a negative 18. Then when you add 3 to it, we get a negative 15 as our final result. Easy. So f of now negative 2. Again, it's still going to be less than negative 1, so we're still using the top function. So it's negative 2 times negative 2 squared plus 3. Do not forget your parentheses here. All right. So this becomes a positive 4, and a positive 4 multiplied by a negative 2 will be negative 8. And then we're going to add 3 to that, so that's going to now be a negative 5. Okay, great. How about now f of negative 1? So negative 1 is equal to negative 1, so we're still using the top function. All right, so this is negative 2 times negative 1 squared plus 3. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. And then negative 2 plus a 3 is going to be a positive 1. There we go. And now f of 0. We now change the function because 0 is now greater than negative 1. So I'm going to use this function, okay? So this is 5 times 0 plus, excuse me, minus 7. And obviously that's just going to be negative 7. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, hope this helped. All you got to do is basically just plug in the values and simplify. So look forward to helping you out on the next problems. Please remember to subscribe. I'll see you then.